الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, welcome back to another episode of Chai with my bai where we help you excel in your deen and your dunya Last week's episode we discussed the issue of dua and why we, especially in a time like this need to be focusing, sharpening and expanding the amount of dua that we make Today inshallah we're going to be showing you how you can perfect your dua to make it the most effective weapon, the most effective tool that you have in your arsenal. You can make it something that you go to first before you go to any other means rather than leaving it as a last resort, as many of us sadly do. So the first question, inshallah, is why is dua? Why should dua be the first thing? Why is it the most important thing that we should go to before anything else? We mean for our brothers and sisters in Palestine in general. For our brothers and sisters in Palestine and generally in your day-to-day life when you've got, you got an appointment coming up, when you've got an exam coming up, when you're trying to get married, whatever it might be. So why is it? First and foremost, I'm going to say a very bold statement. It's going to offend some people. The reason why, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I'm, I have to be honest and I have to be direct because blood is being spilt. Does that make sense? And if you don't take the correct path to the destination that you want to actually reach, you can walk around for years and 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 never actually get to that destination. Okay, so. we, want, we want the Muslims to be safe. We want them to have their land back. We want the Muslims to be liberated. Um, so the stakes are very high. So I really hope people will be able to hold their biases and hold their you know personal inclinations and not get worked up and just listen to what I have to say and judge what we're saying based on text. So the first issue that I have with this situation here yeah, is that the whole Palestinian cause has been hijacked by activists and politicians, social activists and politicians. And this is something that... What do you mean by hijack? It's been hijacked, meaning that they are the ones who have become the mouthpieces. And shame on a lot of the students of knowledge and the du'at. And I ask you to fear Allah Azza wa Jal for your silence on this topic. Does that make sense? Guys, just a brief pause to the podcast. Because of what's been happening in Gaza, I can't lie, I've been thinking a lot. I've been in touch with a lot of scholars going back and forth. And a lot's been going on. <clears throat> and um, there are like five really key, powerful, life-impacting lessons that I have learned in the last month and a half that I want to share with you. And I'm going to be sharing it with you through um, five emails that are going to be released over the next couple of days. All you have to do is just click the link below inshallah ta'ala and put your email address in to show interest for this. I promise you these lessons that I'm going to share with you through email are going to blow your mind. In there is a solutions problem in Gaza, but not a solution. Like stuff you're going to learn about the world around you, learn about yourself. Make it real with you. So yeah, go to the link below inshallah ta'ala, put your email address in and join the Telegram group and uh, wait a couple of days and you'll see these emails inshallah. Okay, now we'll go back to the podcast inshallah. Now, it's true, not everyone has to talk about it. Not everyone has to give, because, because then who's going to teach people about salah? Who's going to teach about zakat? People still need to learn zakat and salah, right? Right. So I understand not everyone has to... Well, they're to. not mutually exclusive though, right? As in a guy can do a course on no, what salah I, what zakat I, what I'm say, what still I, talk about Palestine. I'm talking about opportunity cost. Uh, uh, okay. no, what opportunity cost is there for a guy as to as make a five-minute video? As in, it's not going to take out of his whole day. Sure, He's not going to be able to... I mean, in, I guess in the purest sense, he could make a five-minute video about Palestine and he could make a five-minute video about salah. You, know you mean? can just do like, both. You could do both, you could but do both, you could but do two about What I'm trying to say is, possible. not necessarily everyone mm. has to. And my point is, if everyone just did nothing except talk about Palestine these days, then who would teach the people who are getting married about the rules okay, of Nikah? Yeah, who would teach the people about the rules of Ahkam, which is halal and haram, uh, when it comes to business? People still have lives, and they need people to cater for their lives. Make of sense? Course, of course. So I'm saying I'm not I'm not trying to say that everyone should do nothing except for talk about Palestine. But what I am saying is that students of knowledge, especially the ones who have been blessed and guided to the correct methodology of the Quran and Sunnah, according to the methodology of the Prophet and the Sahaba and the Salaf al Salih, your silence, Wallahi, some of you should fear being what Imam Ibn Qayyim described as Shaytan al Akhras, <coughs> a silent devil. Does that make sense? Silent devils, because what you've done is you've allowed people that are ignorant who don't know the dynamics of what's really happening. They only look at things from a political filter. And you know what? I'm not necessarily blaming them for looking things up from a political filter. Perhaps it's down to their ignorance. They don't have Islamic knowledge, but then they understand politics or they understand social activism. And because they see the pain of our brothers and sisters, they That's want the to- That's the only work. way they understand. It's the only way they understand, right? Work. So I'm not even necessarily blaming them. What I am blaming 
is the is is the is the brothers who have the knowledge. Does that make sense? And maybe for whatever reason they've decided to what remain quiet on this issue and not give the people the guidance that is that is required. That is required. So the problem here is that and 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 for those that have a, a political or an, a social activist type leading, please, inshallah, this is not me attacking you or criticizing you, but. I'm trying to open your mind here, inshallah ta'ala. Let's go to the Quran. Let's go to the Sunnah. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Qulillahumma malik al mulk. Tu'til mulka man tasha. Wa tanzi'ul mulka min man tasha. Wa tu'izzu man tasha. Wa tudhillu man tasha. Biyadika al khair. Inna ka ala kulli shayin qadir. Say, oh Allah, to you belongs the kingdom. You give it to whom you will, and you take it from whom you will. The ard of Palestine, of Palestine, belongs to Allah. And Allah gives it to whom he wills. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes Allah will allow it to be in the hands of people who are not deserving. For a greater wisdom, which we mentioned in one of our previous episodes. Allah said, And like that, we alternate the days, we give you victory, we give them victory, we make you lose, we make them win. Why? So Allah Azza wa can see who the real believers are because in these days the hypocrites become clear. Just on that note, finish, sorry. Go on. on these days the hypocrites become clear. Who's a munafiq? Mm. Who's a hypocrite? Who's, a, who's, hit, who's backstabbing the Muslims? That becomes clear. So we know who's a real believer or not. You can't know unless you have these testing times who the real believers are not. And so Allah can take martyrs. Does that make sense? So the point that I want people to understand here is that Allah Azza wa Jal, He is the one who's in control of this land. Does that make sense? And for a greater wisdom, He lets the occupation of this land change. The, the hands in who's, who, the hands of the occupiers change. Does that make sense? Now, that's not Allah Azza wa Jal rewarding the shayateen who have stolen this land or allowing their transgression. Please don't ever attribute injustice to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But there's a greater wisdom, right? Which we talked about in. The previous episode, which I think it came out, right? Which people can refer back to. Now, we can go back into this point a bit more deeper. I think you want to make a point. No, I was just going to mention the issue of you said about the will of Allah. Because mm. we also recently did a podcast with uh, Brother Didi, right? On uh, Blood Brothers. Mm. And uh, he was quite pressing you on this, uh, on this issue, on this question of, um, you know, because obviously we <coughs> attribute humiliation of the Muslims to sins, right? Correct. It's mentioned in the Quran, it's mentioned mm. in the Sunnah, the Hadith about, you know, if you leave off these four sins, uh, Allah will uh, place humiliation over you until mm. you go back to your religion. Mm -hmm. The Quran, we're told that even the corruption is spread throughout the land because that's what the hands of men have done. Mm. And, um, you know, uh, Dili asked you a question, which was, uh, have there not been times in the past when people have been sinning? And yeah, Allah still gave them victory. So why is it that today is any different? And I just wanted to mention, because you mentioned about the will of Allah, and mm. I feel like, because um, in the podcast you didn't mention this, I feel like it, it, would, it would be beneficial to mention, which is that at the end of the day, it's down to the will of Allah. Like the same way he's given, like right now, let's just say the, the occupation that's there right now, uh, does that mean that they're righteous? No, of course not. But Or that they're not sinners? No, of course not, in the kuffar. But the point of the matter is Allah gives it to whoever he wills. Not only that, Allah gives us the formula. His will, he can do whatever he wants. Just like, for example, yeah, uh, the prostitute that, fed water to a kitten, to a cat, and she was entered- Dog, dog, dog. To a, was it a dog? Yeah. She fed uh, water to a dog, and she was entered into paradise. Mm. Does that now mean then, because that happened, we can say, we can, we can say that, oh, look, we can do the same thing. Sisters, become prostitutes. Sisters become prostitutes, and just feed the dog, and you go into paradise. Mm. No, not at all, because Allah gave us the formula. Mm. The formula was, do good deeds, stay away from shirk, stay away from bid'ah, stay away from sins, you'll enter into paradise, inshallah, mm. with Allah's will. Still, still, mm. even then, with Allah's will. Mm -hmm. So just because something happened, and even then we don't know for certain, who can say that, were you alive then to say that these people were more sinners than they were righteous? We don't know for certain. Allah knows. But also yeah. by the way, and I mentioned in the podcast that it's not, it, it was never It was never common. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was never common. But either way, the point is, is that even common. if, let's just say for argument, they were all sinners and Allah did still give the victory. That doesn't mean that you then take, because the formula is still there. Yeah. The formula has been given to us by the, in the Quran. So, so we're going to yes. come inshallah to the issue of sin is in a bit more detail and making sins and, 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 and we'll talk about that. But what I want people to understand is that this matter is in the hands of Allah. Now that really helps you to really understand that the matter is not in the hands of America. So, it's not in the hands of Joe Biden. So. It's not in the hands of this Don that they've got um, in the UK. Okay, it's not in the hands of anyone, anyone except the King of Kings, except oh. for 
Malikul Mulk, right? The, 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 the owner of, of, of the dominion. Malikul Amlak, the king of kings, is only in his hands. Okay, cool. Now that you've understood that, it's really important that you ask yourself, okay, if Allah, you're the one who, who really is in control, then how can I get what I want from you, Ya Rab? As in, I want this land back for the Muslims. I want it back for the Muslims. Does that make sense? So Allah Azza wa tells us to do two things. To rely upon him and ask him and to take the means. To rely upon him and ask him, to, and this is in everything in life. When it comes to work, when it comes to money, rely upon Allah. Don't rely upon your boss. Don't rely upon your, rely upon your efforts. Rely upon Allah and take the means. Okay, when it comes to marriage, <clears throat> rely upon Allah. He's the one that's going to provide your wife. Don't play, what is what does reliance even mean? We have to actually break it down to the, this deep. Like tawakkul is timadul qalb. It's to connect your heart. It's to connect your what? It's to connect your heart to something and make your heart lean on something, depend on something. Does that make sense? So you got to make your heart depend on Allah to provide me this meal. But you got to put in the efforts to what? To actually go out and get it. To go out and get it. And, and, and the tie your camel, in other words. Tie camel. And, 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 and yeah, okay, so the, the hadith that captures this, the man will ask the Prophet, should I tie my camel or leave it untied and place my trust in Allah? And the Prophet وسلم, said, do both. Tie it and place your trust in Allah at the same time. Do the both of them at the exact same time. And there's a beauty in this because <clears throat> it's honestly true, Iman, to put in 100% effort yourself. And then to not be fooled by your efforts and say it was only Allah. Like this is actually the test. It would actually be very easy if all I had to do was just sit here and trust in Allah. Because I wouldn't have the illusion of my efforts as a fitna to think that it was actually me. Another big mistake I feel like people and, make. And, and, so, so, and, and just to give an example to really drive this home here. Is that when it came to the battle of Badr. When it came to the battle of Badr. It honestly shocks me the language Allah uses. Who was fighting the battle of Badr? Best of the best. But who were they? Who were they? The Sahaba. Sahaba. The Sahaba fighting, right? So the best of the best of the Sahaba. Okay, the best of the best of the Sahaba. So okay, when, when the Sahaba were fighting the Badr and they were and they, and, they, and, and, and they were defeating their enemies, who who was the one that was actually fighting them and killing them? Who was it? It was them. It was the angels as well that were helping them. Right. And, Allah said, "No, you didn't kill them. When you killed them, Allah killed them." Mm. Allah said, "Wa ma ramita, idh ramita, walakin Allah rama." You didn't, you didn't shoot when you shot. Rather, Allah is the one who shot. Akhi, wallahi, I have to deep this for a second. Mm. You, 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 you didn't throw when you threw. Rather, Allah is the one who threw. You didn't throw when you threw. Allah threw. But the Prophet said, I threw, I threw the dust. and Because the Prophet he had dust in his hand and he blew it and he went into all of their eyes. Okay, how did that happen? Mm. Allah said, I did that. Allah said, you did not when you came to battle. You did not, when you came to battle, O Muhammad وسلم, and your companions, you did not kill them. Allah killed them. And that's why Allah said in the ayah, um, uh, when you said, O Muhammad وسلم, to the Prophet, to the, to, to, to the companions, that Allah is going to send down angels to fight alongside you. Allah said, we only sent the angels down Bushra lakum, as a glad tiding to you and to give your heart peace. وَلَا وَمَا but Allah Azza wa Jalla وَمَن نَصْرُ but the victory إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ look at the language. Well, like this is not something that's up for discussion, ya ikhwa. This is not something that you should be confused. Allah said وَمَن نَصْرُ but the victory didn't come from any place. It didn't come from anywhere. إِلَّا مِنْ except it came from إِنْدِ اللَّهِ from Allah. That's it. Period. Does that make sense? So now that we understand this, the question is, what do we do to get that from Allah? The one thing I, I, I wanted to just point out is I feel like a lot of people make a mistake is dua when it comes to the issue of tying your camel, right? There's tying your camel and there's trusting in Allah. Which one does dua come under? I feel like people think it comes under trusting in Allah. It's actually tying your camel. Part of the process that you have to do is dua. Don't think that, oh, I do the things and then I make dua and that's my... No, 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 no. Dua is part of the actions that you have to do. Dua is from the means that you take. It's from tying your camel. Making dua is you tying your camel. If you're not making dua, you're not tying your camel. You can do everything else. That's you tying your camel. Don't think that's me relying in Allah. 
the reliance comes. I, I mean, it's connected to the relying on Allah. It's, it's connected it's to part it, of the means. But it's part of the means. And, and, and people might be like, okay, cool. Well, if du'as mean, what about the other means? Like, obviously, there's 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 there's, um, there's resistance. What you call jihad or death? There's other means. There's discussion about are these means political or not? Obviously, there's boycotting as a means, raising awareness as a means, the media about as a means. These all means, hundred percent. Okay, but why are these guys talking about du'a so much? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why because. I honestly feel, wallahu a'la wa a'lam, but our situation, when we're looking at our Palestinian brothers, looking on at the onslaught and not being able to do something, is very similar to Yunus in the, in, in, in the, in the well, or, or the fish, the big, you know, the big sea creature that he's, he was inside of. What, what could he have done to get out except for call upon Allah? Like what, what could he have done? Hmm. Like, as in, what, as in, when you break it down, and other people are going to say, oh, you, you know, I'm sure he could have done things. I'm sure he could have tried to, you know, cut his way through the belly of the whale, pu punch it, push it. I'm, 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 I don't know. The most effective. What was the, the, but was, the was better? But straight away as most he, effective. he realized, I'm stuck. Mm. There's no way to get in. I mean, I mean, for him, there was no way to get out. But now we want to get aid into our brothers and sisters. We want to help them in whatever way. There's no way to get in. You, you, bro, we are. Like inside of the belly of the world. Another example the Sheikh Mashur gave, which is a beautiful example, but he said it's like at the time of you know when Isa Ali some comes back. Yeah. Just to clarify, you're not saying that there's absolutely nothing else we can do right now except da'a and only da'a should be made. You're saying there is there are still benefits. A hundred percent many things that you can do. I'm the media you war do. and you know whatnot. There's things trying. that there's things that you can do that you're not even aware of. Spreading awareness, which, inshallah. Which way, well, I'm, I shouldn't say that. I'm assuming you may not be aware. I'm gonna mention them to you, inshallah. But point being and I'm talking about like, the crux of the matter. If we've established that Allah is in control, then the first thing it makes sense to do is to, to beg my Lord, to, 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 to beg him, to, to cry out to him. The pro and, and, and you know what's shocking is, okay, cool. So we talk about the issue of like a resistance, right? Like military resistance, which no doubt is a means and no doubt. It's, it, it's happening right now. It, yeah. Right, but we're not mentioning our support. We're not advocating any support, anything like that for any organization, whatever have you. But just in terms of the Islamic ruling, we know, and this is something that there's unanimous consensus, that a, a, a self-defense is obligatory. Mm -hmm. Self-defense is it's obligatory. You, you, as in, in this situation, when, when the Muslims' lands are being attacked, they have to defend themselves. Yeah. Okay? And it's obligatory on the Muslims to okay. serve them in that. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. But what can man do? There's, there's no fizz, like I said, you are in the belly of the whale. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, no, there's, you, you, these hands that you have, you can't do anything to serve them with these hands, as in physically. Do you, do you understand? Apart from, you know, what you could do in your own ends. Okay, cool. So then, if that's the case, then the Prophet let's take his analogy, because the Prophet what? He, 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 they defended themselves. The battle of Uhud was a defensive battle and also the battle of Ahzab. How are we forgetting the dua the Prophet made? Allah when the battle Allah of Badr happened, the Prophet stood up the whole night making dua. I think if your dua is not the whole night, or at least a third of the night, at 10 minutes of the night, every night, at the very least, at the time when Allah descends to the lowest heaven, He says, who's calling me so I can respond? Who's asking me so I can give? Who's seeking forgiveness so I can forgive? If at that time, every day, for at least 10 minutes, you don't wake up and sacrifice some sleep and say, Ya Allah, Allahumma inna naj'aluka fi luhurihim. Oh Allah, we ask you to restrain them and hold these shayateen by their necks. Wa na'udhu bika min shururihim. And we seek refuge in you, with you, Ya Allah, from their evil. If you don't make these du'a, as at that time at the very least then bro you you have fallen short mm. but you want to do other things that i'm not saying they're haram and i'm not even going to say they're bad and then there are things that you do that actually are bad yeah. which they require free mixing and yeah. sinning does that make sense yeah. and it's like bro it makes no sense uh, you're honestly not going to get the desired outcome the prophet said in the battle of ahzab the closest thing to what we see here, what's happening in, in, in Gaza, is the battle of Ahzab. They literally came to Medina and they surrounded Medina. They literally surrounded, literally. Allah described this battle in a way he didn't describe any other battle in the Quran. Allah said, your hearts were in your throats. Your hearts went into your throats. You were shaken. Does that make sense? The Prophet was saying, Allahumma munzil al-kitab, sari al-hisab, hazim al-ahzab, Allahumma ihzihim. 
أو كما قال he's making dua Allah shake them ya Allah destroy them ya Allah disperse them defeat them my point is that the person he took up arms he made dua mm. in the battle of Hazab the arms was very limited they, they, they couldn't like some of the, the battles were happening in the trenches they were firing arrows the Muslims couldn't it wasn't a battle like that the Muslims didn't actually engage. there were some duels and some skirmishes to play, but it wasn't a battle where they actually scrapped because they couldn't mm. Dua and Allah sent thee the wind and Allah made them fight themselves and Allah said وَحَزَّمَ الْأَحْزَابَ وَحْدَ that the Prophet would say oh Allah you dispersed you overcame and defeated the confederates وَحْدَ yourself no one did it except for you no one did it except for you no one did it except for you that's from the Umrah as well he makes that du'a yeah Umrah. yeah صدق وعده ونصر عبده او الله يو ار تروثفول ان يور بروميس اوكي يو صدقه ها صدقه يو صدقه وعده ونصر عبده صدقه ميبي از ا ديفرنت وان صدقه وعده يو ار تروثفول ان يور ان يور بروميس ونصر جست كات ميستيك ونصر عبده يو جيف فيكتري تو يور سليف وهزم الاحزاب وحده والله يو اوفر كيم ذا كونفدريتس الون يو ديت الون وي ديت دو ات دوز ذات ميك سنس نو ذس واي وي كيب سين لان توحيد ذس واي بيكوز ذس توحيد نايس او وي نو لا اله الا الله وي نو توحيد انجز وعده وانجز وعده ونصر عبده اوسو صدق يا اي ثينك يو مايت بي رايت أنجز وعده ونصر عبدا وهزم الأحزاب واحدة واحدة. So point being is that if you don't get this point, I'm saying after this we can talk about dua a little bit more, like the means, like the conditions. But we can talk about the other means too. But you have to get this point right that your Lord is the one who's going to give you victory. Does that make sense? And perhaps Allah has a place this calamity over the believers to wake them up to this reality so they can purify their hearts and reconnect themselves to their Lord. But you know, no one's going to say to you that I don't believe that Allah's not the one that's going to give victory. Everyone will come to you and say, yes, without a shadow of a doubt, we believe that Allah's going to give victory. <coughs> I think the point that you're making is your actions speak louder than your words. Honestly. Like you might say that, but ask yourself, really, like, like let me ask you a question. Yeah? Do you genuinely believe that if you sat for six hours making dua, six hours, imagine that, six hours, back to back, six hours straight, of just sat there making dua, do you feel like protesting on, on the street for six hours would be more effective? And now let your actions speak louder than your words. How much time have you spent protesting and how much time have you spent making dua? Usually dua is very short. You make dua, Ya Allah, please do this, Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, please, thank you so much. And even then, look, okay, so cool. Let's just, do you want to mention, uh, do you want to chime in if you remember? Uh, I'll wait for you guys when the opportunity comes, inshallah. Opportunity? Okay. No, that's not what no, I mean. No, he means when he feels yeah. okay. something that he can. <laughs> All right, cool. So look, there's, when it comes to du'a now, there's two things, yeah? There's things that you got to do and things you got to stay away from. Likewise, when it comes to being healthy, right? There's things I have to do. I have to do exercise. I have to have a certain diet. And there's things I got to avoid, right? Like if I... Don't avoid certain things. I might eat certain things that are good, but if I don't avoid certain things that are healthy, what's going to happen? I'm not going to get my desired objective. So sometimes you might, so the first stage is do what's required. The second thing is now stay away from that, which is what? Not required. Not required. Or, or, or detrimental, detrimental or preventative. Okay. The first thing is just raise your hands, bro. Like, if you say to me, we do make, okay, you might make dua, barakallah for you. I'm not denying that. But this is an ummah situation. So we have to have enough of the ummah to make dua. I really want people, because I feel like when you talk about this, people take it on a personal level. But man, it's not attack you. If you make dua, alhamdulillah. But I'm saying the ummah is Can not you do more? It, it, okay, it's, it's not even that. Maybe you can't even do more. Maybe you're making dua enough, right? I don't think anyone can say that. I'm just hypothetical. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm you just, can't say that. I know, of course, but I'm just playing hypothetically. But now you start telling people that this is what the call should be heavy on. Yo, my bro. Come, let's, like, like dua. This, you know what I'm saying? You need to be spreading this. So I think what, one it, part of this that I really just like, yeah, is there is, there is this, uh, and I remember this when we, uh, <coughs> when we went to the, the podcast and the Bible Dili, he put a big emphasis on uh, the leaders, the rulers. Um, 
and to be honest, I think he should have made this point uh, during the podcast. I would honestly, I would have loved it if he came and he spoke to all of us together. That would have been a yeah. much more entertaining conversation. But really, the 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 idea of uh, throwing the blame or the I'm not saying that's what Sorry, he was let's doing. Say something. Go on. That would have been chai with my bloody bay. <laughs> Blood brothers, <laughs> <shut my> bay. <laughs> <laughs> what a collab. Yeah, the 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 notion. I'm not saying that he was doing this. I'm not saying that anyone else is anyone that listens to him or what. Nothing related to Diddy, but. The notion of throwing the responsibility or the blame onto other people, i.e. the rulers or somebody else, really removes personal responsibility, personal accountability. Mm. You have to think about what you can do to uh, solve this problem or uh, deal with this issue or whatever. And if, in order for you to think about what you can do, first you have to think about what you've done to lead to this problem in mm. the first place. Um, and I think honestly, if you if you go about it from that perspective, which is let's not think about the top. The top is like you know global powers, armies, all this stuff. It can you don't have to be uh, able to contribute in that sense, but you could be able to contribute from your own personal side, and that's the solution that we're talking about here, which is that mm. you can't do anything else. I mean, let's say for example, you're you're a woman with three kids. You can't even go to protest. You want to. You're dying. You want to go to. You're dying for it. You want to go. To, you can't. Um, what should you do instead? Okay, last resort now. We're going to make dar. And I was actually saying this the other day. Uh, we were with the brothers. We were having a meal. And I was like, this could be a test from Allah. The borders are closed. We can't go and help them physically, humanitarily or, uh, or um, Otherwise. Uh, any other way, right? You send money, Israel doesn't let the trucks in, okay? We're left with the final option, make dar. And people still refuse. And people, are still, people are still like, no, what's the point? I don't think... I don't think people refuse. Like I don't think anyone's there no, saying no. Think, we shouldn't I, make that. No, it's, it's it's a tacit kind of refusal. It's not it's not verbal. Nobody's gonna actually say. No, that's what I'm saying. I won't do anything. That's what I'm saying. No one's actually gonna say that, right? But they say that in their actions by not doing it. By not do you doing it or, or it's like, not it's doing like, it example, enough or doing other things more so than it or putting other things above. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's like for example, a person who says, uh, you know, such and such about, for example, physical health, like you mentioned. Oh, I shouldn't drink coke and I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't do that. And it's all lip service, but you won't actually do it. Mm. Do you understand? Like, I want, what I want people to understand is, bro, I'm not even telling you right now. I'm not even telling you to stop doing the other things. Like this is what shocked me about that podcast. You know, some of the comments that I saw. I made it clear I'm against protesting, but if for argument's sake, I'm not even going to tell you to stop protesting. Just, so why are you offended? Just, just no, no, do no. as much da'a So as you why do. are you offended when we tell you to make da'a? Just it's a question to ask. <laughs> do you understand? I have not. I have not said to. you. No, I, I believe like, some people just come into it with a lens. With I don't think they even heard you say that. You, you said no, it. No, they didn't even listen. No, to no you. I, I saw the comments. Because bro, you, there are people in the comments saying, "Well, why is this guy being a pacifist?" I'm thinking, bro, did you even listen to what you said? <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly, genuinely, some people they come in, no. the ears are closed, they just look and it, they see what they want to see, and then they just comment. Irrespective, my point is that I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. That if man's told you, bro, you know what? If you want to, if I'm, I, I'm not even here to tell you. If you can find a way to do protest in a way that's completely halal, there's no free mixing, there's no like any, anything haram involved, not etc. And you go and do it. You're saying, I still disagree with you, but no problem. Do it, but just make that for the for the same amount of time that you spend protesting. Spend that same amount of time. I'm saying even if you don't, no, I'm well, I'm going deeper. Even if you don't, and you go to a regular protest. No, no, I, I'm saying uh, yeah, I'm saying I'm saying even if you don't make dua. Oh, okay. Wait, what are you saying? Why do you get offended when I take to make da'a? That to me shows there's an aqeedah issue. That shows the issue oh, to yeah, me. Oh yeah, you mind crisis, 100%. Yeah, which is what he said right at the yeah. beginning. Yeah, but I feel like for a lot of people, it's, it, it, it's what he, it goes back to what or, he said. Or, or for, I, I guarantee there's people that are watching that are frustrated. That guarantee the people that yeah. first 15 minutes. It goes oh, back to what he said, again. which is that you're placing the accountability on them and they would rather see the accountability placed on people like rulers around the world and et cetera, et cetera. I sometimes, I sometimes, I honestly, it's just a lack of yaqeen, bro. I, I, well, I, let's call it a spade a spade. Sometimes it's, bro, the tawheed is deficient. Yeah. The man didn't understand Allah. Yeah, I think that we do a disservice to the truth by assuming that everyone's iman is top notch. Yeah. That's not true. And it, and it's no, but, judging, get, no, no, but then you get called. No, but, 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 judging, no, but then, you know, that's the thing. But then people. they said but that, oh, the you Salafis seem to think that you guys are better than everyone else. You have negative assumption of the Ummah. You believe that everyone else isn't making the You believe that you guys are the only ones that are that's up on the right path. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's intellectually dishonest from so many angles because you can say then anyone who tells you anything about the Quran and Sunnah believes about themselves that they're better than you. And that's not the case. You will have people who, they, bro, their job is to disseminate what is in the Quran and Sunnah. They don't believe anything about you or 
ignore about themselves. Obviously, I'm not saying there's no bad apples. Of course, there are people who think that they're better than other people based on their, you know, prowess and the dean or whatever. But that's got nothing to do with what we're talking about here. We shouldn't have to make that disclaimer. Barakallahu Barakallahu man. Yeah, that, that, and, 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 that, and that's why I started with that introduction that I did. To address the crisis of Iman or... Bro, if you, if you get offended when people tell you to listen to your Lord and go back to your deen, your pro the problem is with you. That person might be weaponizing the religion against you. Sure, that I'm not saying that's not true. I'm just saying that if you... It's like, for example, let's say, for example, hypothetically, yeah, a person is unhealthy or a person is broke or a person is... Uh, they're lacking in something going on in their life. And someone else comes along and gives them advice. Achi, please, stop eating junk food. Achi, please, go to the gym. Achi, please you know, uh, fix your relationship with your family, your wife, whatever. And then he takes it deep personally. It's got nothing to do with you. You just try to help the guy. Uh, maybe sincerely, maybe even insincerely. Maybe you wanted to call him fat because you, you know, you for kicks or whatever. But that's got nothing to do with how he should take the advice. He should take it on board and think, okay, you know what? Whether he said it good or bad, there is a truth in there. There's a seed, there's a, there's a grain of, as what do they call it, a grain of truth to every joke know. or something, right? That's the part of it that you should look for. And I'm saying in the same breath, for us, the people who are, we're on the podcast, oh, these guys are thinking they're better than you, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Let's, let's say, let's say we did. Let's say we sat here and we were like, bro, these people, they're going to hell. Let's help them. Or, let, or let's judge them, okay? Let's say that's the case. You, the viewer, should not assume that to be the case. You should look past that and then say, what is the truth of what they're saying? Is there any truth to what they're saying? And then maybe you can, we can get somewhere after that. You know, it just hit me how much of a red herring it is that when people bring this up. Because yeah. we've had to defend ourselves on something that we didn't intend and weren't even talking yeah. about. But it's like, someone's just going to drop that in the comments and things are going to go left. Problematic, man. But yeah, like, well, I, khair, man. You, ex you explain the very eloquent Should we not go to the da'a itself? The times, the places, <laughs> so, the so, methods? Okay, the methods, yeah, cool. So like I said, the first thing is make da'a. Uh, you know when someone says to me, oh, the Ummah is making dua. I'm, I, Ummah is not making dua. You know why? Because Allah promised, Rabbukum astajib lakum. Allah said, make dua to me, I respond. There's no two, there's no two ways. So at what point do you say the, the, the Ummah is now making dua? Like 50% okay. of the Ummah makes dua at the same time? Is it different times? Allah, is it same day? Is it... You know what I'm saying? Do you, let me, people, let me, 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 Results okay. or measurable results. So like, how me, can we measure success? My, my, let me um, let me rephrase that. Yeah, for me to say the ummah is not making dua, I haven't looked at the whole ummah. I don't have that. So that requires. Whatever. Okay, what I meant is that adequate dua is not clearly being done. Okay, the uh, adequate dua is not being done because if we were, we would get what we wanted. The Prophet said that Allah so is is hayun kareem. He's shy and generous. When a slave raises his hands to make dua, Allah is shy and generous to let his hands return back to a side empty-handed. But what does that mean though? Does that mean there's not a single person on the earth right now that did that? No. Of, remember, if you make the dua for yourself personally, yeah, with certainty for yourself, know that the dua has been accepted. Done. This is a situation which is, 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 is a communal situation. Does that make sense? So, Communally, we have to make that. Now, I'm not saying that this is a way to quantify, and but something that I find that kind of helps me understand is the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad speaking to his wife, mm -hmm. Allah Taala Anham, where she said, "Well, Allah is able to destroy us, and there are righteous people amongst us." And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Yes, if the filthy are more than the righteous, does that make sense?" So, Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is an ummah situation. It's not an individual situation. Does that make sense? We as an ummah need to come towards. This concept of 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 making dua, and, and and by the way, the dua it could be responded by you receiving exactly what you want. The delay could be respond. The, there could be a delay to the response, as the Prophet doesn't mention, mm -hmm. due to a greater wisdom. Like for example, one of the things that my Shaykh mentioned to me was there's so much mercy from Allah in the victory being delayed right now, because okay, how many people are becoming martyred? How many people are becoming exposed? How many Muslims are realizing the difference between us and the kuffar? One of my, my sheikhs, uh, he mentioned, he's in Egypt, he said, bro, we used to get on the member on the pulpit on Friday and think, how do we explain to these youth that the kuffar are not your friends and you shouldn't emulate them for them as role models? He goes, today, they all understand. Well, they, was, they, all, they all understand. Does that make sense? I was with a brother recently at that same gathering and um, <coughs> he mentioned like his eyes were opened the hypocrisy of the kuffar where like before it was like 
that's calm. Like my neighbors or, you know, my people that I know, what know, like Sally, Susan, Bill, John, Jackson, whatever their names are. Like, they're all right. They accept me for who I am. They accept this, they accept that. Like, they're, they're cool, you know? Because like, this made me realize, like, deep down, they're not. As in, like, even just like, you know, like when, 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 for example, yeah, for example, this, will, this, will, this is the example that was given as well. If you go to the comment section, there's a YouTube channel called GB News, right? Set up by Nigel Farage and all them, man. <laughs> Bro, if you go to the comment section of any video that they make and you see the hatred <clears throat> that these guys have deep down for you, Bro, you 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 realize very quickly that listen, like it's not okay to be to be in places where you're surrounded by these people. <laughs> like tough. I'm being genuine, like bro, like for your wife to be going around, you know, dressed as she is and what you know uh, in niqab and hijab and so on and so forth. Bro, I'm telling you, it's not safe. And as these issues, when these issues occur, and the polarization it happens, it, yeah. it flares it up. And even the ones who previously may have said that we're in the middle or we're this or we're understanding whatnot, even within them, it begins to grow. Mm. And this just goes to show you can't take them as friends. You mm. can't take them as your allies. Mm. But people don't realize that. And yeah. the only... Should, should I tell you what? It's because in, in recent times, <coughs> there has been such a huge rise of liberalism. So the kuffar themselves are more liberal than they have been in previous times. Mm. Um, if this was... But even the in, liberal ones, they will only assimilate with you if you assimilate them yeah exactly and then you guys have to meet together so their thing yeah, is look exactly we will accept sense. you wearing niqab That's the we'll accept yeah. you having a beard we'll accept you praying and we'll accept all of that but then you gotta accept this LGBT thing my brother yeah. you gotta come in and accept me yeah, as a yeah. man going into your female toilets you gotta accept as long as you accept that we can we, we, we can hug each other but you gotta let us hug you do you get yeah, it? Yeah. Well, it's not for Kufar, they tell you straight, right? so we don't like you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, that's big, what I'm great in times like get this, out of here, bro. in like, times this, like this, in polarizing this, situations like this, as you mentioned, it makes people go back to what their original true beliefs are, <coughs> uh, which is it's us and them. And um, even then, the left, many of them, there were only many, like, cause some, you're probably watching this freaking problem. I've got work colleagues that are fine with me. I've got this, that are, you know, my neighbors are calling me. But let me ask you a question. Do you, do you compromise your deen? Like, is the reason why they accept you because you don't have a big beard? Yeah. Because you shave your beard and you because fit in? Is it so because remembered. you have a nickname that is more similar to the name that they have? Is, is it because you don't wear the hijab? Is it because you don't wear the correct clothes? You fit in with them. That's why they accept you. If you were to go now and follow the religion to the T, do you think they would be as accepting of you? Do you think they would be a little bit scared of you, a little bit afraid of you? And now when someone, when they see on the TV, Ross, someone's whispering about, you know, these Muslims, they're coming into our country and immigrants, it's all men coming. Why are they not women? They're about to today go, but they all start to feel, raw. what's going on here? This is a bit mad. Yeah. Before you know it, boom, speak. Yeah. So advice to the Muslims. If you want if, if to boycott brands, product, bro, boycott, the, bro, boycott entire economies, just leave. Do hijrah if, you, if you're able to. But here's the problem though, and this is what I was discussing with Amanan the other day, right? People, I'll be very careful how I phrase this. People will not leave their home, will not leave the, where they are or their family, or whatever. Because you know that when I just said do Hijrah, people say, oh, but where? Where can I go? If, if I'm Pakistani, bro, if I, you want me to go live in a village? I can't live in a village. I can't live in the village life. So you can't leave the UK, whichever country you're in right now as a boycott <laughs> for Palestine, right? Because obviously, no doubt, whatever tax you're paying is going towards them and they, 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 it's, it's open, it's clear. If the, if, if the Muslims from any one of these European countries just got up and left one day, their economies would crash. Yeah, and, and this, would crash. you want to do a boycott, do a serious boycott, but you won't. Why? Because you said, bro, my lifestyle is going to suffer. My risk is going to suffer. My livelihood is going to suffer. And yet you have the audacity to claim or say that if... You had to leave for other reasons you would leave where your life would be at risk. Come on, don't fool yourself. Don't be silly. If you can't leave where you are without valid reason, call it maybe if you're giving da'wah, you have a valid reason to be there. Other than, if you can't leave that because you're worried about your lifestyle change that's going to happen, your standard of living is going to drop because you're, you know, you're, like I said, your livelihood is going to be at stake. You can't leave because of that. How the hell do you expect me to believe that if you're going to be ready to make greater sacrifices. Greater sacrifices. You won't be. Because then it's your entire life. That same fear that's stopping you from leaving now, I promise you that same fear will be 10 times exemplified and it will stop you from you, leaving you, 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 know, you know the thing about this that, that, that kind of makes me a bit baffed? People are straight away going to think, but you're being extreme. 
But I don't even understand why you don't understand it. Like, I don't get why you wouldn't understand why boycotting the co country would not be more useful than boycotting a product. Like, I, I don't get it. In that, you'd be boycotting the product. You, you, you know, you, you, you'd be boycotting everything. Like, you no, know, as, as in, Your man, entire workforce is, you, 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 like, your GDP, whatever yeah. it is, is taken out of that country. <laughs> Like, and it's given to the countries of the Muslims, which, mm. which by the way, by the way, and no one's saying that those countries are perfect. And no one's saying that the, you're going to live in a utopia and, you know, nothing's, in, what I'm saying is way better than living in the, in the lands of the Kufar. And that's like, that's but just- the, the, just, the, sh the shocking thing is here is just the, the, the sheer reactions on people's faces, the cringe in their face. Oh, look at these guys. Like, it shows that man's not ready for victory then, isn't it? Man's not ready to do what it takes. It's just, it's, it's easier. It's, um, and by the way, I'm not anti boycotting, but you know me, I'm very strict when it comes to boycotting. <laughs> I, but the f I boycott yeah. France, anything French, bro. I don't even drink Evian, Volvic. No, yeah, because they mock the brothers, doesn't Does that make sense? Ma that, akhid, anything that comes from from Some from man, from these men that call themselves Israel, I'm not touching it, bro. I'm not touching that. Do you get me? Like I'm 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 not ever anti boycotting. I'm so for it. Does that mm. make sense? So why are you not talking about Imran? Because I don't believe that's the greatest thing that we can do. And I already know people are already doing that. So man's talking about the thing that we're not doing. Also, you know when it comes to the issue- like guy with a headache and a bullet wound, you yeah. can address the bullet wound. So yeah. that's the most important thing. But definitely, yeah, boycott is-, is, thing, is, is And, is, and is, you know when it comes to the issue of that, people don't realize, like it's not a choice, you know? It's not like you could do it if you want, it's very useful, but it's okay. You actually will be punished if you don't make that. Because the same ayah Allah said, قَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبَ لَكُمْ Allah said, make dua to me, I will respond. Allah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدُخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِلِينَ Whoever becomes arrogant to make dua, and Allah refers to dua as ibadah here. Whoever becomes arrogant to make dua, he's too arrogant to make dua. I'm going to place him into hellfire, humiliated and belittled. And this is, cause, and, and this brings to another hadith, for the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ لَمْ يَسْأَلِ اللَّهِ Whoever doesn't make dua to Allah, Allah becomes angry with him. Why? Because you didn't make dua for one of two reasons. And both reasons are as bad as each other. If not major sins. Number one is arrogance. I don't need to make dua to Allah. I can do it myself. I can do protests. I can do this. I can move mountains. I can, I can move worlds. Does that make sense? Or no hope. And this is, this, this, this is one that I'm scared. This is the one that I'm scared that I don't, I have good thoughts. I don't believe people are suffering from what? Arrogance. I'm scared. Hope is what they're lacking. Does that make sense? Mm, is Allah really going to respond? Which by the way is something that Allah said is a characteristic of the kuffar. No one loses hope in Allah and despairs in Allah except for the disbelievers. There is Allah who's been taking care of you this entire time. Who's been protected every Every day your soul leaves your body and it ascends. It ascends and it goes through heavens. Does that make sense? And it comes back down in the morning into your body. Who is taking care of it and protecting it the whole time? Who is, who, is, who is taking care of you as you walk through this world with viruses that are all around you and calamities and disasters and Allah is just protecting you, navigating all of these things away from you when you never even asked. And you've got the nerve to say that if I ask Allah, He won't respond. He's, who, who's, who's been the one that's been... Who put this oh this this massive atmosphere or this this correct me if I use any unscientific terms but this this shield around the earth to protect it from the meteorites that are regularly hitting this earth that if it wasn't there it would have been just destroying us. That's called the moon. Huh? That thing you're talking about is called the moon. The moon? Yeah. But isn't it also like a atmosphere? The moon has a gravitational pull that deflects asteroids. Ah barakallah feet. And who is it that placed the, the mountains, the earth as pegs to stabilize the earth? Right, who like who, who's the one who sends down the rain? When you never ask, how, bro, man, did man make dua for rain? Allah sends down the rain. Yeah, I was gonna say that's actually a really good point. Uh, well, one time I was in Saudi and I asked Gullah, I was like, bro, does it ever rain here? He was there like, what they do is they all come together and they make dua for rain and then it rains. Uh, bro, bro, Ustad <laughs> and I was like, well, that's bro, sick. Ustad Yassin <laughs> told me a time when there was a drought and they went to pray Salatul Istisqa, the, sal the rain, the rain Salah in Masjid Al Haram. And the rain came down literally as the salah finished, bro. Yeah. Does that make sense? So point 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 being is is that like Allah has been taking care of you and not even making dua. Yeah. What makes you think if you actually ask the shy, generous king of kings who loves to give, that he's not just gonna rain down his his um his uh, his favors on you if you actually ask? 
there's a dua that I make which I'm not sure if I should share. I don't think you should. I think you should share something different. So Abu Bakr alluded to the fact earlier that people don't really know how to make du'a. They go like this, Ya Allah, please, please help the Muslims. Ameen. Okay? And I'm not ju- well, I'm not making mockery of the du'a and I'm not judging the people who do it like that. I'm just saying that I feel like perhaps one of the reasons that people don't make adequate du'a or they feel like, <coughs> how do I make du'a or what should I do to make du'a is because they don't know how to. Mm. So why don't you give a quick breakdown, okay. a quick tutorial. Beautiful. How to make du'a. So firstly, there's things you've got to do before the your du'a. Your first time. You've never, you've never made du'a before. Okay. It's going to be your first time to correctly, you're not like when you're scared huh? on a you're roller coaster. A okay, cool. Beautiful, yeah. number one. You're not scared on a roller coaster. You're not about to get into a car crash. You're going to sit down and you're going to concertedly make du'a for the first okay. time. The first thing is you need good aqeed and righteous actions. Okay, which means tawheed, tawakkul, good aqeedah, good thoughts of Allah, hope in Allah, fear in Allah, right? You have to have these the actions of the heart and you have to have the actions of the limbs. And the evidence for that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If my slave asks about me, I am close. Ujib, I respond. Ujibu da'wata da'i da da'an. I respond to the dua of the one who makes dua when he makes dua. Okay? Then Allah said, Ujibu da'wata da'i da da'a فَلِيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي فَلِيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي so then respond to me, Allah said, and believe in me. If you believe in Allah and you respond to what Allah wants you to do, you do the actions that Allah and His Messenger Sassam tell you to do. What does it mean to believe in Allah? You just believe that He exists? And, oh, good. Believe in His ability? Believe, good. Believe, believe. Iman. Allah Azza wa Jal said, قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاطِ To the end of the ayah. Allah says, say, we believe ma in what Allah sent down. The ma means everything. Ma, the ma here, it encompasses everything. We believe in everything. Our iman, everything Allah sent. His names, his attributes, qadr, day of judgment, angels, messengers, prophets, signs of the day, judgment, this, that, belief in the grace, perfect your iman. Allah says, Ya ayyu alladhina amanu, oh you believe, aminu, belief. Allah says, oh you believe, believe, i.e. perfect your belief, perfect your iman, correct your iman, make it even better, make it more solid, make it more sharp, fix these deficiencies that you have in your aqeed and your creed, and then respond to Allah, i.e. pray your salah, do your zakat, do your siyam, do that. Okay, good. The next thing you need to do is stay away from sins. Stay away from sins. And there's one ayah in Surah Al-Anfal. And what you don't realize, Surah Al-Anfal is a surah that should be studied in this day and age because it's a surah of victory. And how Allah prepares people for victory. Does that make sense? Allah Jal said, Allah is not one who will, dis- who, will dis- who will punish you. Whilst you're with them, Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is not going to punish you whilst you're present with them. Okay, the Prophet's not here. And Allah said, Allah is not going to punish them whilst they are seeking forgiveness. So then the ulama they mention, and the Salaf mentioned, there, there are two things that save you from punishment. Number one, the Prophet says I'm being present and he's not yeah. alive anymore. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, forgiveness. As long as you are making forgiveness and you're seeking forgiveness, Allah will not punish you. Okay, good. Are you saying that Allah is punishing the brothers and sisters in Palestine? How dare you say that, Imran? What have these kids done? I am not saying that. And I made it very clear in that podcast that we referenced earlier that the victory is of two types. And I believe that the people in Palestine are victorious. Inshallah. Allah says, Whoever fights in the, in the path of Allah, he's either killed, i.e., he's a martyr. Or he becomes victorious. That's humiliation because of sins isn't necessarily from your, only your own sins. Yeah. If you if you got business partners who yeah. sin, that could lead to them sin. But also, if you in your people in your community that sin, it could be a reason for your community to suffer. Yeah. Likewise, if people in the ummah sin, yeah. it's a reason for people in the whole ummah to in suffer. The suffer. But those people, I honestly believe, is victory for them. You know why? Mm. Because the prophet said, because look, number one, because when you go through difficulty, the, 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 okay, okay, you know what? Let me answer it this way. The Allah Azza wa Jalla said. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Allah 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 Allah. If Allah wishes good for anyone You sib minhu Allah inflicts him with calamity If Allah wishes good He gives you calamity Because the Prophet said The, the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Idham al ajar Inda idha The great uh, the, the, the greater the reward Inda idham al bala Is with the great calamity the greater the, the, the calamity, the greater the reward. The Prophet has the greatest reward because he suffered the most. Does that make sense? So their suffering is a purification of their sins, elevation of their good deeds, 
who are the ones that it seems like are being punished? Like, honestly, I, it seems like it's us. Yeah. us. Yeah. I keep it real with you, bro. Like the ones who want to help but can't, who are humiliated, who have been stripped of their iman. Well, I've been stripped of our clothes. Mm. Like as in, our women walk around naked. Yeah. Does that make sense? And Worse than it's ever been before. Like, yeah. I, I, no, I, I think a part of our punishment is, as I said, being deprived of du'a because it's like, as I said before, it's a final resort and still, does that make sense? So, 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 and, and, wrap it up. and, and okay, and the, and the last thing point I mentioned just to drive the point home is, um, um, Sheikh, I'm sorry because we're running out of time. The question was, how do you make that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the, the sin thing is very important. So, the hadith the Prophet mentioned so a man raises his hands to make dua, he says, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, he calls out to Allah, he makes dua, he's on a travel, and traveler's dua is accepted. But the Prophet said, His food is haram, his drink is haram, his clothes is haram. How will his dua be accepted? I.e., you're making dua, but you're sinning. Does that make sense? So your sins, I'm saying your pornography that you watch, your free mixing, your girlfriend, your music that you listen to, your arrogance, your backbiting, your disobedience to your parents can be a block to that dua you make for Palestine. Does that make sense? So hold yourself to what? For those of you that just got offended because you said your sins, let's say our sins. Okay, our, our sins, sins, our sins. So, okay, cool. Now, how do you make dua? There are many things you could do to it. Number one. We're going to have to leave that another episode. We're already over time. Give me 20 seconds and I'll just give you... 20 seconds? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. The du'as the Prophet ﷺ made in times of battle and calamity, make those, okay? Uh, make du'a on the last day of the night. Raise your hands and make du'a. Make du'a to Allah with his names and his attributes. Praise Allah. After that, send salutations upon the Prophet ﷺ. Then ask for what it is that you want. Make du'a in the sujood. Make it between the adhan and the iqamah. Make du'a in the last hour after asr, before before maghrib on Friday. You can make du'a because of good deeds that you've done. So imagine in the past you've done a particular good deed. Yeah. Make du'a to Allah because of that good deed that I did with sincerity and hopefully, inshallah, you And make du'a with focus. Make du'a with concentration. Make du'a, don't, you know, uh, Allah doesn't respond to the du'a the Prophet said of now one said, don't use your phone for half an hour before you start making du'a whose heart is what? whose heart is heedless oh, sure. he's making du'a but he's thinking about something else yeah, that's what I was saying so don't use your phone for at least half an hour before you sit down to make du'a because mm. your phone honestly is one of the biggest it's not like a condition but it's no, like no, no, no. I mean, just, that's yeah. advice for me yeah. we're going to conclude it there inshallah one thing I would advise before you comment down below before you even come up with any thoughts based on what you've listened so far to me should probably say this at the beginning is come to this without emotions come to this without preconceived notions come to this and just what does Allah want from me yeah self accountability that's the thing in it you want to come to any situation that happens and ask what does Allah want from me in this situation put the emotions <coughs> that you do. Well, you don't think the things that we would love to do things that we want to do these things we want to say people we want to speak about to it, we would love to but Allah told us not to the sunnah told us not to that's the only reason why we don't, because of the sunnah, because we're trying to follow the sunnah, that's it. So likewise with you, don't look at what does Instagram want me to do? What do, what does the mass, what does the mob want me to do? What do people online want me to do? Ask yourself, what does Allah want you to do? And the only place you're going to find that is in the Quran and the sunnah. With that said, we'll see you on the next episode of Chai Mabai. I feel like we have to do another episode still on how to actually make da'a. But we'll get around to that, inshallah. Barakallahu fiqh, subhanakallahu wa bihamdika, shadu wa la ilaha ilaha ta'astaghfiru wa tubu ilayka, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you on the next episode of Chai with Mabai.